If you click on the link in the description for this video, you can have access to this actual spreadsheet and perform these operations yourself. What we're trying to do here today in this spreadsheet is to find an equation that relates the average orbital radius of the different planets, that's how far the planet is from the Sun on average, also known as its semi-major axis, and the relationship between that and how much time it takes to go all the way around the Sun, and we're gonna measure that time in seconds. This is known as linearizing data Sometimes I call it mathematical modeling. But we want to find an equation where we can plug in this number to the equation, and the equation gives us this in return, or plugs in this number and gives us this number. Typically, they could follow one of three forms. It could be a linear relationship, a power relationship, or an exponential relationship. And if we graph the radius on the x-axis and the time or the period on the y-axis, if the relationship is linear, it would give us a straight line. And we could find the slope of that line to give us the value of a, and we can find out where it crosses the y-axis, the intercept, and it would give us the value of b. But if we graph the radius and the period and it curves, clearly it's not a linear relationship, it might be power, but exponential relationships would also curve. So what we did is, if it's a power relationship, the variable here will get raised to some power. And this was a little scary if you haven't had Algebra 2 already, but we took the log of both sides, worked it down, but we found that if we took the log of the radius, or the x value, and graph that on the horizontal axis, and graph the log of the y value on the vertical axis, the number out in front here would be the slope, and the number added to the end would be the y-intercept. So if log base 10 of a equals the intercept, we could find out what a is by taking 10 raised to the intercept. And we can find out what b is by just finding the slope. b would be just the slope but it would turn it into a straight line. If it was an exponential relationship between those two uh, variables, uh, graphing the radius and the period would curve, but just like we did here, uh, or, the, or I should say the exponential relationship, the variable is the exponent, and we would need to find out what a and b are. After we did our fun log stuff, we would find that if we graph just the x variable on the horizontal axis, but the log of the y variable on the y axis. This single number in front here would be the slope, and that number there would be the y-intercept. I would be able to find a with this, and I'd be able to find b with that. So let's go ahead and try. Let's see if the relationship between the average distance to the sun and the time it takes to go around the sun Let's see if that relationship is linear. So I'm going to just highlight those two columns. I'm going to insert that into a chart. And when we do, it defaulted to a column chart. The sheet thought that that was the best one. It got it wrong. So we have to choose, scroll down here and choose a scatter. Scatter plot, I think it's fairly safe to say that we will always do a scatter plot when we graph in physics. Maybe it's a little hard to see, but if you held a straight edge up to that data, the data has a curve to it. And if the data curves, it's not linear. So we're just going to delete that. We don't need that one. The relationship between radius and period does not follow a straight line. So now let's go ahead and check to see if it is a power relationship. And to do that, I'm going to graph the log of each radius against the log of each period. So I'm just going to make a label here, here, log of the radius and the log of the period. So I'm going to use these two columns to, to tweak those numbers, to rescale them a little bit. So I'm going to type in a formula. The formula is called log. 
and this cell here would be the log of that number there. The cell did turn green, and that's I have it programmed in the background to do that so that you'll know you're on the right track. But let's try to make sense of that number real quick. The log of that number is equal to that number, which means 10 raised to that number would equal this number. Okay, that's just a little bit with logarithms. If I double click on there, we see we're taking the log of that number. I hit escape. If I copy that formula down, and I'm going to copy it by putting the cursor on that corner, copy it down one, now the formula takes the log of the number down one. But instead of just copying it down one time, let's just copy it down all the way. And again with logs, the log base 10 of this number equals this number. So 10 raised to that number is equal to this number. All of these numbers were the logs of all of those numbers. So if I copy all those formulas to the right, then I would take the log of the numbers one to the right. So these are the logs of each of those numbers. So let's graph the log of the radius and the log of the period and see if we get a straight line. It's already highlighted, so I'm going to insert a chart. And this time it thought a line graph, a line chart was the best one. Got it wrong again. We always want to come down here to a scatter plot. Sometimes it will give you like two columns here, and usually the way to fix that is to make sure we use the first column as our labels. But if I hold a straight edge to that, I would see that it really did tweak and, and rescale the data into a nice straight line here. So this graph here tells me that the relationship is a power relationship. And I'm just going to move that chart kind of out of the way over here. So we, we got a straight line here. So if we come down to here, it says graph to determine the relationship between radius and period. The relationship is linear power exponential. It was a power relationship. Cell turned green. We got it right. Okay. So what it says is that we can take the radius and raise it to some number and then multiply it by some number and it would give us the period. So let's go ahead and find out what A and B are. We can find A in the power area here with a formula. Can we start with an equal sign? 10 raised to, that's shift 6, gives us, it's also known as caret. So 10 raised to, and then we're going to have the sheet calculate what the intercept is. So we're going to plug numbers into a formula called intercept. It will calculate the intercept and then take 10 raised to the intercept. These numbers here did not give us a straight line. These numbers gave us a straight line. So those are the numbers that we want to use to calculate the intercept. We have to put in all the y values, hit comma, and then give it all the x values so that it can calculate the intercept. I hit enter, and that looks like the value of A. That's the number that's going to go right there. Uh, sorry, right here uh, for power. Okay, And then B, we can find B by finding the slope. So it's going to be a f for formula again. The formula is called slope. Uh, always open your parentheses. Don't forget to do that because you've got to plug numbers into that function. Same syntax, we give it all the y values first, hit comma, and then give it all the x values, and then hit enter. Okay, And um, that is given it in scientific notation. I probably prefer to have it not in scientific notation, but just as uh, a plain number, not scientific notation. So I had to do format there. But we see that b is 1.5. And when I got B is 1.5 here, uh, this popped up here. This relationship is known as Kepler's third law. Um, I, I don't expect you to know that now. We are actually going to derive this equation when we talk about circular motion and universal gravitation. 
but I'm just showing it to you now because today we're only practicing linearizing data. I also call that mathematical modeling. This, uh, see, can you see why b is equal to 1.5? Can you see why uh, this number right here is 1.5? Well, maybe not. So if you can't, let's just go ahead and say no. Turn red, because that's bad. We want to be able to see uh, why it's true. Do you need some help? And if you can't see yes, you probably do need some help. Uh, when we type in yes here, uh, some more detail shows up here. So this was Kepler's third law, and here it looks like the variable r gets raised to the power of 3, but I was here saying that b sh should have been raised to the power of 1.5. Well, it's because we don't have just y by itself over there, or t by itself. If I take the square root of this side and the square root of this side, I get t squared, square rooted, and all of that square rooted. t squared, square rooted is just t. The square root of all of that times this is the square root of all of that times the square root of that. If you're in Algebra 2 now or Geometry, this might not be familiar, but if you take the square root of r cubed, it's the same thing as taking r cubed to the power of 1 half. And if you haven't seen that, don't freak out. Don't go and drop physics, but um, you'll be okay. You, it will make a lot of sense when you get to that spot in your math class. But r cubed raised to the power of 1 half an exponent raised to an exponent, you have to multiply those exponents. 3 times 1 half is 3 halves. And then r to the 3 halves is r to the 1.5. All right, so it looks like it was a power relationship. The radius got raised to some power, and then it got multiplied by a number. Now, 4 is a constant, pi is a constant, this g is a constant, and the mass of the sun is a constant. When you take the square root of all that, you still get a constant, and that is going to be the value of a. That's this number here. All right, so, so hopefully now we can see um, that, yes, I can see why that was 1.5, so we'll type in yes there, and we're green, so we're good. The last thing we need to do here is find the mass of the sun. Now, we haven't talked about Kepler's third law or universal gravitation yet, so you're not familiar with this uh, g here. It's called the universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So I'm just giving that to you here. Uh, we know that pi is 3.14 or 3.14159265358, and so on. Um, to get the decimals of pi, you can type it in as a function equals pi open close parentheses. It's like a function that you plug numbers into, but you don't have to plug anything into the function to calculate pi. All right. Let's go ahead and calculate the mass of the sun. Now, how do you do that? Well, we want to find out what the mass of the sun is here. We don't want to do it for just a single data point, a, a single radius and a period. We want to use our graph to find these things. And if you, uh, so do you need some help finding the mass of the sun? If you do, you can type in yes. So this was the result we got from down here. We found that it was a power relationship. B was 1.5 and A is all that stuff there. A is all that stuff there. So we're trying to find out what the mass of the sun is. We have to rearrange this equation to find the mass of the sun. If you're still struggling with that, you might need some more help. So you can type in yes. And so we took our relationship here. We're trying to get the mass of the sun by itself. We got to get it out of the square root. So I'm going to take a and I'm going to square both sides a squared, and then all of that squared is just all of that. 
trying to get the mass of the sun by itself. I'm going to multiply this side by the mass of the sun and multiply this by the mass of the sun. The mass of the sun would cancel out of this side and show up over here. And then I'm going to divide both sides by a squared and it will show up down here. So it looks like we can find the mass of the sun by taking 4 times, that's shift um, 8 for asterisk, uh, 4 times pi, so there's pi. It's squared, so I have to raise it to the power of 2. So I'm just following all of this stuff here. So that's 4 pi squared divided by g, and so that's our g right there. And then I have to also, uh, don't take g times a squared, unless you use parentheses around all of that. We could just also divide by a squared. And a was what we found here. That number raised to the power of 2. I hit enter, and the cell turned green. This is 1.94 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. That's a lot of mass, but that is exactly how um, scientists have found the mass of the sun, is by looking at the different planets and how far they are from the sun and how much time it takes to go around the sun. So that's a little introduction into uh, linearizing data and finding the equation that models the relationship between the two variables, radius and period.